Okay, uh, so I guess we're ready to start our first uh, technique of integration. And this is called integration by substitution. Um, so it's, in some way, it's a sort of a reverse of the chain rule. So, so we have the chain rule for derivatives. Let's take the derivative of a function f of another function g of x, right? And, well, hopefully you remember that you take the derivative of f with respect to g and then multiply by the derivative of g, right? So that's the chain rule. Just a quick reminder of that. Right. And um, so the idea is if we integrate this function, the derivative of f of g times the derivative of g, right, with respect to x, we should just get the original function f of g of x, right, plus a constant because it's an in indefinite integral. Um, right, so, so that's the idea. And now I'm just going to make one switch here because we, what we want to get, right, we're not going to be able to integrate f prime. We're just, we just want to integrate f, right, some function f of another function g of x. And the trick is that there has to be, you have to have a, a factor of g prime of x in the integrand for this to work. And then this is going to be your antiderivative of little f, so I'll call it capital F, of g of x. Again, plus C, because that's your constant of integration. So this capital F, right, if you take the derivative of capital F, you just get little f, right? So capital F is an antiderivative of little f, okay? So, right, so this is the idea. And as a practical matter, what, what you're going to look for is what's, inside here, right, what are you taking f of, and it's usually, right, some, well, I'll do it again, some function of x. So g of x, we can give that a name, we can call it u, um, right, we don't have to use u, but that's sort of the standard, this is sometimes called, right, u substitution. But you can use any, any letter you want, you can use w or z, um, Right, and in particular, uh, if your variable is not x but u, then you might want to use a different letter like w or, or uh, you know, t or z or y. Um, but you'll see that usually our functions are, are with respect to x, and then we can use u for our substitution, right? So what's the derivative of u? Well, that's the same as g prime of x. And so I'm just going to multiply both sides by the dx on both sides. So that, that cancels the dx on the left, and you end up with du is equal to g prime of x times dx, right? And so this is what we're looking for here. We need to, we need to find this in order to do a substitution. Okay, so I'm sure none of this made a whole lot of sense yet. Uh, so let's do some examples where this actually, where we actually do substitution here. So I'll call this example one. Right. So suppose we wanna take the indefinite integral, we'll do definite integrals later. For now, indefinite integral of the square root of, let's do 4x minus 5 with respect to x. Okay. So, yeah, oddly enough, as simple as this seems, this is something we, we weren't able to do yet. Um, right. So, well, first thing we can do, of course, is 
just as we would if we were taking the derivative of the square root of 4x minus 5, we would change that to 4x minus 5 to the power 1 half, so we can use the power rule. But that's for derivatives, right? That's for derivatives. So there is no chain rule for antiderivatives, right? Or we don't call it that. We call it substitution, right? So sure, if you were taking the derivative of of this, the 4x minus 5 to the 1 half, you would, right, you would use the power rule. Bring the 1 half in front, multiply 4x minus 5 to the negative 1 half, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside, the 4x minus 5, right? So it's what's inside, right? Uh, let me try that again here. Right? What's inside the function here is the g of x, right? So that should be what I call g of x, or u. So we're going to let u be what's inside the parentheses, 4x minus 5, or what's under the square root. Same thing, right? 4x minus 5. Okay. So if we do that, then what, what's our du? So du, well, first of all, the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of u is just 4, right? Um, but again, we can multiply both sides by dx, and we get that du is just 4 times dx. Make sense? So, right, so this is what we're going to need to do, right? We're going to need 4 times dx, right? So here's my dx, but I don't see a 4. So that's kind of a, that's kind of a problem, right? Um, because if we want to turn this all into, into u's, um, right, u here and then du, we need a 4. But 4 is just a constant, right? 4 is just a constant. So if you want, I'm going to have to do this way down here now, um, just leave some space. This is still 4x minus 5 to the 1 half. No problem. That's, that's still there. Times dx, right? But we're missing a 4, right? So why don't we just multiply by 4? Right? Just stick it in there. Well, obviously that what we just did is we multiplied the whole thing by 4. So whatever the answer is, let's say the answer is 10. Right now we're going to get 40 because we just multiplied 10 times 4. Well, we want to get 10, not 40. So what do we have to do? Well, then just do the opposite. Divide by 4. Right. So if you multiply by 4 and divide by 4, then you're really just multiplying by 1, and that's not going to affect the answer. You're back to 10 again instead of 40. But this this 4 in the denominator here, we, we really don't want it here. Right. That's kind of inside the integral, because it's a constant, we can take it outside the integral and just multiply by 1 over 4. That's the same as dividing by 4, right? So what we've effectively done now is we've identified this 4dx, right, as our du right here, right? Right. So now we can change that to du. So we still have the 1 fourth in front. We still have the integral. We still have, in parentheses, 4x four, four minus 5 to the power 1 half. And now this 4 times dx is now du, right? OK, but now we have a problem because we're mixing our x's and u's, and you really can't do that here, right? But if I change the 4dx to du, Right. Why didn't I change the 4x minus 5? All of this, just change that to u. Right. So let's do that now. This is 1 fourth times the integral of u to the 1 half du. Right. And now we're all set. Now there's no problem, right? This is just the ordinary power rule for integrals. Um, way up here in the top left, 
Let me remind you, this is the integral of u to the n du. That's just going to be u to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, right, plus c. Um, well, as long as n is not negative 1, right, that's the one exception. Right? So this is just the power rule, not for derivatives, but for integrals. Um, and notice that all I did was change x to u here. Whether you call it x or u or y or z doesn't matter. Um, it's, it, as we showed in the last video, it's just a dummy variable. So we can do this. This is 1 fourth times, so here my n is 1 half. So 1 half plus 1 is 1 and a half, or 3 over 2. Right, it's supposed to be a 3. And then we divide by n plus 1. We divide by 3 over 2, right? But that's the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. So we have 2 over 3 times 1 over 4 times u to the power 3 over 2. Right? Now I'm running out of space. Uh, don't forget the plus c. That's still there. So 2 over 12, that's just 1 over 6. And then this is u to the 3 halves. Right, I'm okay with leaving it like that, plus c. So there we go. That's the answer. Uh, but there's one drawback here. Orig this was the original problem way up here in the, in the upper left. Right? The question was, what's the integral of the square root of 4x minus 5 with respect to x? So ideally, we wanted to get something in terms of x, not in terms of u. So what do, we, what do we do? Well, we go back to what u was. We d originally, we defined u up here, right, as 4x minus 5. So let me remind you, right, since it's kind of off the, off the screen here, right, our u was just 4x minus 5. So I just copied that down from up here, right? So if u was 4x minus 5, then so is this u. So why don't we change that u to 4x minus 5. We still have the 1, 6, and then we'll use parentheses, 4x minus 5 to the power 3 over 2 plus c. And I think that's it. Right, so that should be our final answer. Right. And I did this in so many steps here. Um, but once you get used to it, uh, you, you know, you don't have to go step by step like I did. You can skip a few steps here. Um, but for the first time we see this, uh, I just want to make, make sure it's kind of clear. Um, so remember the original problem, well, let's write it way over here, was the integral of the square root of 4x minus 5, that's a 5, with respect to x. And now we know the answer. So we can leave it in terms of the power 3 halves, or we could write it this way. We could write it as 4x minus 5, in parentheses, times the square root of 4x minus 5, divided by 6, plus c. So either way, right, I'm not, I'm not picky about which way you write it. In fact, it probably would be better to leave it in terms of the exponent here. So yeah, I, I would kind of prefer it this way um, than this, but either way is fine. Okay, so that was our first example of integration by substitution, right? So again, this, this was a fairly routine problem, and you know, picking u was just picking what's in the parentheses. In other problems, you'll see it's not always as clear. What should I select for, for u? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into that uh, when we do some more, more difficult examples. Before we do another example, though, we might want to check, right? After doing all that, can we check this? Well, how do we check an integral if we take the derivative, right, of the 1 6 times 4x minus 5 to the 3 halves, right, plus c, although the derivative of c is 0, so we usually don't worry about that. Um, then what should I get? I should get the square root of 4x minus 5. Um, 
So let's see if that's what we get. So now we're taking derivatives now. So now we're using the power rule, but for derivatives. So we have the constant 1, 6 in front. Um, and then we bring the power in front, 3 over 2, times 4x minus 5, right, to the power 3 over 2 minus 1 is 1 half. And then don't forget the chain rule. The chain rule says we have to take the derivative of 4x minus 5. The derivative of 4x minus 5 is 4 minus 0, right? And so what do we get? We get, let's see, 3 over 6 is 1 over 2. So this is 1 over 4 times 4x minus 5 to the 1 half times 4, although we should probably bring the 4 in front, right? And if we do that, we get 4 over 4, which is 1, right? So that's just 1, uh, times 4x minus 5 to the 1 half, also known as the square root of 4x minus 5. And so you can see that that matches the original integrand. So I think, I think we have it, right? So that means uh, this answer here was correct. And again, any one of these ways you can write it is fine. So that's how substitution works, right? It's essentially just the reverse of the chain rule. When you check, we had to use the chain rule, right? Because when we're taking the derivative, we use the chain rule. But when we're taking an antiderivative, when we're using an integral up here, we use substitution, right? So this is called, sorry, integration by substitution. Okay, so let's do another example. Okay, so our next example is to do the indefinite integral of, in parentheses, x cubed plus 8, all to the fifth power, times 3x squared. Okay, so yeah, this is a product, and remember, there's no product rule for integrals. So, yeah, whatever you do, don't just take the integral, right? So, I'll tell you what not to do, right? Do not take the integral of x cubed plus 8 to the fifth, right, times the integral of 3x squared. That just doesn't work. That's not the answer. So don't even try it, right? There is no product rule. Right? And it's certainly not this, right? Because it doesn't work for derivatives, right? The derivative of the product is not the product of the derivatives, right? So, yeah. So, okay, so it's a product, right? Now, this is something that, of course, you could do without using any fancy techniques like substitution, um, although it's a very tedious problem, right? Because you could, you could simplify all this, right? You could multiply it out, right? But that, as you'll see, is really untenable here, right? Because when you multiply it to the fifth power, yep, you have to foil this out once, Right, twice, three times, four times, right? And then multiply by the 3x squared. And yeah, that could take quite a while, right? That's just going to take way too long, you know. And, you know, sure, if you have no other way of doing it, then go right ahead and multiply it all out. Take, take, you, know, take, you know, take 10 minutes to do all that. But no, we don't want to do that here. We want to do the most efficient way possible, and in this case, it's to use substitution, okay? Oh, of course, um, you know, you, you could do this when the exponent is, say, 4 or 5, maybe 6, but suppose the exponent was 35. Then you're not going to multiply this out 35 times, right? Even with the binomial theorem, right? You, you could use the binomial theorem to avoid doing this. Um, but even that gets to be very, very difficult. So, okay, we're not going to do 35. We'll just do 5, right? So, so we, we know what not to do, right? We're not going to multiply it out. So what can we do instead? Right? So we look for u, right? What should u be? Yeah, so as I said, it's usually what's inside the parentheses, but notice I have two parentheses here. So what should my u be? Should it be this, the x, x cubed plus 8, 
or should it be this, the 3x squared? Well, let's just try one, right? Let's try the first one. Let's try x cubed plus 8, and let's take the derivative. What's the derivative of x cubed plus 8? Well, it's 3x squared, which is what we have, right? So that's what we wanted, right? We want our du, let me try that again, we want du to equal 3x squared times dx, which is exactly what we have, right? All of this becomes du now, right? And this will become u to the fifth. So u to the power 5 times du. And you can take it from here, right? So b before we evaluate this, right, um, just using the ordinary power rule for integrals, um, let's take a step back and see, right, why that worked. It worked because, right, what's in the parentheses here, the x cubed plus 8, um, right, the derivative is exactly the 3x squared, right? So it worked out exactly. If, on the other hand, you chose u to be 3x squared, you'll see that that doesn't work because the derivative will be 6x. And this thing over here is certainly not anywhere close to 6x. Okay, so yeah, that, that just did not work. Um, so s sometimes it's just trial and error, right? What should you be? Try something, see if it works, see if you get your du exactly as a factor. Um, and if it doesn't, try something else, right? Um, so, uh, so now I think we can finish the problem um, using the power rule for antiderivatives, this is going to be u to the 5 plus 1, which is u to the 6, divided by 6, plus c. Right? And remember, there's one more step, because this is originally in terms of x up here. Let's just change u back to x cubed plus 8. Right? So this will be x cubed plus 8, all to the power 6, divided by 6, right, plus c. Or you can write it as 1 over 6 times right, x cubed plus 8 to the 6 plus c. So either way is fine. And I'll leave it to you to check, right? Don't forget to check. And how do we check? Take the derivative of this, right? Take the derivative of all this and see if you get, well, the original integrand. Oh, let's do it, right? So, very quickly, let's take the derivative. I'll use a slightly different color here. Let's take the derivative of 1 over 6, uh, x cubed plus 8 to the 6. Again, the derivative of c is 0, so I'll leave the c out. So, 1 6 times, well, use the power rule, right? For derivatives, you multiply by 6 times x cubed plus 8 to the 6 minus 1, which is 5. And then don't forget to multiply by the derivative of what's in the parentheses here. The derivative of x cubed plus 8 is 3x squared. Okay, so notice what happens in front here. This 6 divided by 6 is 1, and we end up with x cubed plus 8 to the fifth power times 3x squared, and that should look awfully familiar, right? All of this is the original integrand here, and so for that reason, we know that this is correct either way. Uh, yeah, so there's another example. Now, in this case, I kind of made it easy for you because I already had the 3x squared here, right? In some problems, it it, right, the 3 might not be there, right? And so you might have to multiply by 3, right, and then divide by 3 on the outside if it's not already there. Uh, sorry about that. So we'll see that when we do the next example. Okay, so uh, example 3, we want to do the indefinite integral of x divided by the square root of x squared plus 4 dx, right, with respect to x. Um, so this is a quotient, and remember there's no quotient rule, just like there's no product rule either. That's if you go way back up here, right? No product rule and no quotient rule either. So, yep, 
don't even try it. Instead, we're going to look at this as a substitution problem. And it might help to rewrite this the following way here. Um, oh, well, I'm just going to rewrite the problem. So maybe I'll use the same color here. Right. So if you're dividing by the square root, right, that's to the power um, one, negative one half, right? So this will be the same thing as x times x squared plus 4 all to the power negative one half dx. Okay. So, right, so now I changed it from a quotient to a product, but that doesn't necessarily help because there's no product rule either. And, and so this is where we look for our u. Right, so what should u be here? Well, what's in the parentheses, right? Always try that first. In this case, it's also what's under the square root. So why don't we try that? u is x squared plus 4. Right, it's just a guess, but let's see if it works. Right. So now I need to change my dx to du. So what's du? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of 4 is 0. Well, OK, so we don't need to write plus 0. So, yep, so du is just 2x dx. Now, I don't have that here. I just have dx, right? Where's the 2x? Uh, it's not there. Um, but there is an x, right? The x I wrote in front, but that's an easy fix. We can just move it over to the other side, right? So now we have the integral of x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half, so all that stays. And now we have multiplied by x dx. So that's a little better, but that's still not quite right because this is x dx. I need 2x dx. Where's the 2? Well, it's not there, right? So, so there's no 2 um, in the integrand here. But that doesn't matter because it's a constant, right? This 2 here is just a number. I can multiply by 2 as long as I also divide by 2, right? And I'm going to do the clever thing is to divide by 2, not on the inside, but on the outside. So multiply by 1 half, which is also dividing by 2 here, right? So the reason why we did this is to match this here as my du. Right, so all of this will now become du, right? And we still have x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half, but remember, x squared plus 4 was also just u. So this is u to the negative 1 half. Right. That's not supposed to be there. Right, and um, yeah, maybe I made this a little too big, but... At this point, you should be able to take it from here. Right? This is just the power rule for integrals. You know, and we used it in the last two problems, but if you forgot, here it is again. The integral of u to the n right, is just u to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Don't forget your c. And remember that n cannot be negative 1. Well, we're close, right? This is pretty close. n is negative 1 half. But that's okay. As long as it's not negative 1, exactly negative 1, then we're, we're all set. So we can use the power rule here. And so we still have the 1 half in front, right? And now negative 1 half plus 1 is, well, positive 1 half. Is it okay if I write it that way? Right. And then divide by 1 half, but that's the same thing as multiplying by 2, right? So we have 2 times 1 half times u to the power 1 half plus c, and in this case, we get a nice thing happening. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and so our final answer is just u to the 1 half plus c. Well, no, not final answer. We're not quite done yet because, remember, we have to write this in terms of x, but what was u? It was up here, right? x squared plus 4. So this is x squared plus 4. Oops plus 4, right, to the power 1 half plus c. Right. And now I will leave it to you to check. In fact, you can also write this, of course, as just the square root 
of x squared plus 4, right, plus 4, plus c, right, same thing. Okay? So, yep, if you're missing a number, the, the key thing here is, right, we didn't have this 2 here when we needed it for our du, but if you don't have it, you can always just multiply by it as long as you also divide by it on the outside, right? Makes sense? So, yeah, so that's the, that's the idea uh, for substitution. Sometimes you're missing, you know, you're missing a, uh, well, you're, yeah, you're missing a number here, right? If you're missing the x, then you couldn't do it, right? So, for example, um, let me see if I can do that down here. For example, 4, suppose we have the integral of 1 over the square root of x squared plus 4 dx. Okay, so very similar to the last problem, but with one key difference here, right? We can still write this as the integral of x squared plus 4 to the negative 1 half dx, right? And so you can make the same substitution, right? You can still say, look, u is x squared plus 4, right? It's what's in the parentheses here. So this is my u, x squared plus 4, right? And now my du is also the same as before. It's just 2x dx. Right? And you can see, well, all I have is my dx. I don't have the 2x. And so that's, that's a problem, right? Um, so it's, it's the 2 is not the problem. I can, I can multiply by 2, just as I did before. And I would have to divide by 2 to keep it the same, right? So that's not the issue. The issue is I also need an x, right? So... Unfortunately, that's not going to work, right? You, you can't multiply by x and then divide by x because it's a variable. It's not just a number, right? You can't bring the x outside, right? You cannot bring the x outside the integral because that's the, vari that's the variable with which you're uh, integrating with respect to, right? Yeah, so, so yeah, when you're missing a, a factor of x, we're, we're kind of sunk here, right? Because the we can't just multiply and divide by x, so, right? So we're left with the question: Well, then, what do we do? And the answer is: Well, not substitution, or at least not not this version of it. Okay. So so substitution w is a nice technique, and it works for a lot of problems, like the previous two problems here. Right? It worked just fine, uh, but it doesn't always work and it doesn't work for this problem. So it turns out this problem here is a little bit harder because this technique of substitution won't work. We need a different technique. And uh, this is one you're going to have to wait until Calc 2. So you'll have to wait till next semester uh, before you can do a problem like this. Right? Um, and it turns out it, it is doable by a substitution, but you have to use trigonometry for it. It's what's referred to as a trigonometric substitution. Um, so you're going to use a, a trig substitution. So it's the same idea, but you're going to be using theta and, you know, something like cosine theta, or I forgot, maybe it's sine theta or something like that. But, uh, but, but that's not what we're going to do here, right? So for our purpose, we don't have to worry about it. You're not going to see this, right? It's, so Unless it was a trick question, and you know I don't give trick questions. Um, well, at least not on purpose. Uh, but uh, I, will, I will make sure on the next test you don't get something like this. Um, yeah. Okay, so speaking of, of trigonometry, uh, let's try this one. So we have the integral of sine cubed of theta. Right? You, can, you can use sine cubed of x, you can change these to x's, but, you know, it's an angle, so we'll use theta in this case. Sine cubed of theta times cosine of theta d theta. Okay? Um, again, it's a product, right? But there's no product rule for integrals. So, so yeah, so we're not going to use, we, we, right, so we can't do this directly, right? There's no product rule here. So we have to pick, we have to pick our u, right? What should u be? 
Yeah, here it's not obvious, right? Here it's definitely not obvious. You can say, well, maybe it's maybe it's cosine, and then the derivative would be sine or negative sine, but it wouldn't be sine negative sine cubed, right? So, so it's probably not cosine, right? Maybe it's maybe it's sine. Now, you could say, well, what about the cubed? You, sure, you can make it sine cubed, but then when you take the derivative of sine cubed, you're going to need, well, the power rule, right, and, and the chain rule. So when you do that, you get this. So there's your cosine, the theta, right? But we get this, this extra factor here. The three, the 3 is not a problem because we can multiply by 3 and divide by 3, right? But we don't have an extra sine squared. We already used up all the sines in sine cubed. Okay, so yeah, as it turns out, that was not the way to go. We did not need this three here, right? So rather than do that, we'll just make u equal to sine by itself without the power of three, because the derivative of sine is just cosine, right? So. All of this is my du, so all of this here changes to du, right? So, so that's just du, and then this becomes what? This becomes, well, right, u to the 3, because that's just sine to the power 3, right? So we're integrating u to the power 3. And at this point, I'll let you do that because... Well, it's just, it's just another power rule, right? Okay, so I hope, I hope you pause the video and you work this out here. Um, so this is just going to be 1 over 4 times u to the 4th plus c, right? Ordinary power rule for integrals, right? I hope you didn't do 3u squared. That's the derivative. That's not the antiderivative. Um, but what was u, right? u was sine, so, oops. So you should change this to 1 fourth times sine of theta to the power 4 plus c. And, you know, we usually put the 4 after the sine, so this is 1 fourth times sine to the fourth of theta plus c. And, yep, yeah, so that should be the answer. And you can write it as sine to the fourth of theta divided by 4. Again, just don't forget your c because these are indefinite integrals. Okay, so, yeah, again, what allowed us to do the substitution here was the fact that our du, right, oops, was a factor of... The, of the integrand, of what's inside the integral, right? Yep. And uh, yeah, don't forget to check. If you take the derivative of 1 fourth sine to the fourth, you should get sine cubed theta times cosine theta. Okay, moving on. Sine cubed of theta, d theta. So, yeah, and, and just for reference, uh, the last problem we did was the integral of sine cubed theta times cosine theta, d theta, right? So, right, the substitution we made here was u is sine theta. And so you might think, yep, just do that, make u equal to sine theta. So the problem is that the du is, as it was down here, the derivative of sine is cosine. And we had it in the last problem, but there is no cosine in here, right? So, yeah, and this is cosine of theta, right? So, or, sorry, so we have sine cubed theta, d theta. Yep, you're not allowed to multiply by cosine theta because it's, it, it involves a variable of integration, right? It's not a constant, right? So, yep, you can't just multiply by cosine theta and divide by cosine theta. That does not work, right? So, so what do we do? So th this is a trickier problem, right? The integral of sine cubed. Okay. Yep, 
so and th to be fair, this is one you're probably not going to see too much of, um, uh, maybe until Calc 2. So yeah, so this does involve a bit of a trick here, right? And the trick is, hopefully you remember the Pythagorean identity, right? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1, right? Or sine squared theta is just the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared theta, right? So, so, so that's the key here. Now, of course, uh, this is not a 2 here. This is a 3, sine cubed, not sine squared. But that's okay. In fact, that's actually what we need here. What we're going to do is break this apart as, right, we're just going to say 3 is, right, 2 plus 1. And we're going to split this up as, right, sine squared theta times sine of theta, d theta. Right, so you can always do that, right, because sine squared times sine is sine cubed. Okay, and now this sine of theta in here, I'm sorry, sine squared of theta is down here. It's the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I can replace sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. So that's the next step here. I will probably have enough room. So this is 1 minus cosine squared theta times sine of theta, d theta. And you might think, well, okay, so now there's, um, now there's a product, right? And there's no product rule. So, so that's not ideal. Um, but it's a very simple product, right? We can just multiply this out, right? Distribute the sine here. So you're going to get the integral of sine of theta okay, uh, minus, right? So 1 times sine theta minus cosine squared theta times sine of theta, d theta, right? So this whole thing is the integrand now, right? And because you're subtracting, well, we do have a sum rule and difference rule for integrals. So now we can split this up as the integral of sine theta, d theta, right? Minus the integral of cosine squared theta, oops, sorry, times sine theta, times the sine of theta, d theta. Okay. All right. Well, the first integral you should know how to do. The integral of sine is cosine, right? Nope. I hope not, right? Because the derivative of cosine is, is negative sine. So the integral of sine is negative cosine. I made that a little too big. Negative cosine, right? All right. So the first one was, was easy. What about the second one? Well, the second one is a product, and, well, there's still no product rule, right? But if you remember the, the previous example, which is, yep, over here on the left, where we had sine cubed times cosine, uh, this is very similar. This is cosine squared times sine, right? So in this case, um, we want our u to be cosine Right? Not cosine squared, right? Just like earlier, we, we used sine, not sine cubed. Uh, so yeah, u is cosine because the derivative of cosine is, well, negative sine. Right? And here's my negative sine. Well, okay, it's not negative, but we can, we can multiply by negative 1 and divide by negative 1. Uh, or we could recognize that we had a negative outside. We can bring it inside. But let's... Let's do it the usual way here. Um, so, uh, so I'm mixing our problems here. So the first, the first integral was done already. We can leave that alone. It's the second integral here. Let me just rewrite it. We have the integral of cosine squared times sine of theta d theta. And the issue is this minus sign, right? This is negative 1 times sine, which we don't have in front of the sign here, right? Well, negative 1 is just a constant, so we can, I'm trying to pick the right color here, yep, green, we can multiply by negative 1 
on the inside as long as we divide by negative 1 on the outside. And notice we already had a negative 1, so that will become a positive on the outside now, right? So, ah, again, leave the negative cosine theta alone. But now we have plus, right? It's a negative divided by negative is plus the integral of what? Well, this is my, right, du. And this is going to be u squared, right? So it's the integral of u squared du. Sorry, I used a different color here, but it's all yellow now, right? So, right, so that's just a power rule. Um, yeah, so we still have the negative cosine in front here. And then when you integrate u squared, hopefully you're used to that by now. This is one-third u cubed plus c. Oh, that's why I didn't write the plus c here, right? We were going to get to it eventually. Um, yes, when you do this integral way up here, of course you get a plus c as well, right? But if you call this c1 and c2, then when you add them up, eventually you'll just get c, you know, c3, which you can just call c here. So yes, I, I did forget the plus c here, but you know what? I remembered it here, and that's all that matters. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, as, as long as in the end you have a plus c somewhere, that's, that's good enough. Uh, the other problem, one last problem here, is that you can't mix your thetas and u's. They're either all u or all theta. And the original problem was with respect to theta, right? So we'll change u back to, what was it originally? It was cosine theta, right? So we'll plug that in for u here. So we have negative cosine theta plus one-third times cosine cubed of theta plus c. And that should do it, right? This was, if you're, well, the original problem was the integral of sine cubed of theta. Right. So not an easy problem. And in fact, this, this may be even just a little bit too hard for, for this section. But I wanted to do one tricky one uh, you know, before we get to some more routine problems. Okay, so here's a fun one. Uh, example 7, we have the integral of secant squared of 7x minus 5. Right? So I'm sure you all remember the integral of secant squared right, of theta, or we can call it u in this case, right, is just tangent. Right? The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So this is one that you should know by now. Um, or if not, make, make sure you know it soon because it's going to come up and it came up here, right? But here's the problem, right? This 7x minus 5 uh, is not just an x, right? So why do we make that into u? Right? So my u should be, again, what's in the parentheses here, right? The 7x minus 5. Okay. And now the derivative of that is just 7. Right? So du is just 7 dx. And you can see there's no 7 here. There's just a dx without the 7. But by now we're used to this, right? We've done this many times. Just multiply by 7 as long as you divide by 7, right? Um, well, let me, yeah, let me just rewrite the problem so that we do that here. Right. So I'm just going to copy down the, the same problem. This is the integral of secant squared of 7x minus 5 times dx, leaving a little bit of space so that I multiply this by 7 and then divide by 7 on the outside. Okay, so we do that, and this 7 dx, right, that's just du. So this is 1 over 7 times the integral of something du. And what is this something here? Well, it's just secant squared of u because the, the 7x minus 5 is now the same as u, right? Okay, well, um, now there's no problem here, right? This integral here, again, that's the one you should know, right? That's just, the, that's just tangent, right? Um, but don't forget the 1 over 7 in front. 1 over 7 times tangent of u. Don't forget the plus c, right? Plus your constant. 
Um, and that should be it, except what was u? u was 7x minus 5. So change the u now back to 7x minus 5 plus c. And now you can check if you take the derivative of this, you should get secant squared of 7x minus 5. In fact, without working it all out, I think you can see what's going to happen here. When you take the derivative of this, you get secant squared of 7x minus 5. And then by the chain rule, you have to multiply by the derivative of this, which is 7. And then that 7 will cancel the 7 in front to make it just, you know, to make it just secant squared of 7x minus 5. Okay, um, but yeah, if you don't if you don't buy that, just work it out, right? Take the take the derivative of all this, and then see if you get the integrand, the thing that's under the integral. Makes sense. Um, okay, I think uh, yeah, let's do one more indefinite integral, then we'll do some definite integrals. Okay, so we want to. Do the integral of x times the square root of x plus 2. Okay, which I think by now you know that you could rewrite this as the integral of x times x plus 2 to the power 1 half. So nothing wrong with that. That's what you would do if you were taking the derivative. Uh, you would change this to the power 1 half and use the power rule, uh, but for derivatives, right? Okay. So, yep, just rewrote the same problem using an exponent, right? Now, this is another product, right? This is going to be x times this square root, or x plus 2 to the 1 half. Again, no product rule here, right? So what do we do? Well, we look for u, right? And in this case, u should be what's in the parentheses here. It's just x plus 2, right? I mean, will that always work? Well, maybe not. Maybe not in all problems, but in most of them, um, at least here, um, yep, u should be either what's under the, the radical symbol or what's inside the parentheses. So it's a good rule of thumb, right? That what's inside the parentheses here is typically going to be u, um, but again, not, not always. All right, so what's du? du is just the derivative of x, which is 1, right, plus the derivative of 2, which is 0, right, times dx, uh, but this is just du is the same as dx. Well, that's good, because we have dx. We just change that to u now, right? So this is going to be the integral of x times u to the 1 half times du, because dx is just the same as du, right? Okay. Uh, oh, I want to, sorry, I wanted to erase uh, the wrong thing here. All right, I'll just put them back. There we go. Um, yeah, what I wanted to erase was this. Anyways, uh, so it looks like we can do this now, uh, except we can't, right? We can't, we can't have both x and u in the same problem, right? They're either all x's, like they were here, or they're all u's. You can't mix x's and u's. So this x shouldn't be here, right? So, but it's not a constant, right? You can't take it outside. That doesn't work. Uh, yeah, so that's a problem, right? Because you can see what we, what we should have gotten here. If this was x squared plus 2 inside the parentheses, then the derivative of that would be 2x. And we can multiply and divide by 2, no problem. And then that would have worked out perfectly. But in this problem, we didn't have that. The derivative of x plus 2 is just 1 dx. So in this problem, we have this extra x that we shouldn't have. So it looks like we're going to get stuck here, right? And well, I mean, it, this is tricky. This is kind of tricky, because what do we do with this x? Well, look carefully here. Um, Right? This is the same as this x here, right? So I can change this x into u. All I have to do is do the opposite of adding 2, just subtract 2 from both sides. Right? So my x is really just u minus 2. 
So now I can change this x to u minus 2. Uh, let me just not draw the arrow here. So this x is now u minus 2 times u to the 1 half times du. Okay, so, so there we go. Now we have everything in terms of u. Well, okay, but now what do we do? Because this is now a product again, u minus 2 times u to the 1 half. And as I said originally, right, x times the square root of x plus 2, there's no product rule. So that's why we needed a u substitution. But again, there's no product rule here, right? So what do we do? Well, it's a product, but this is one that we can multiply out. Right? We can just distribute the u to the 1 half to each term inside the parentheses. Right? So when we multiply this out, we get u times u to the 1 half, and then minus 2 times u to the 1 half du. Right? So u to the 1 times u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves, right? 1 plus a half is 3 over 2. And then this is still just... 2u to the 1 half du. So I've changed the product into a difference, right? But we know, we know we have the difference rule. So we might as well split this up and integrate u to the 3 halves first. And then minus, the 2 can come outside, the integral of u to the 1 half, right? right? The, the 2 can come outside because it's a constant, right? right? Okay. Um, yep, yeah. and that's a, supposed to be a 1 up there, right? Um, okay, so now just use the power rule. 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2, right? And then divide by 5 over 2, right? Minus 2 times 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2. So this is going to be u to the 3 over 2, again, divided by 3 over 2, and we just did the integral, so don't forget your constant, plus c. And we can clean this up a little bit here, right? Um, if we divide by 5 over 2, we're just multiplying by 2 over 5. Right? And same thing here. Dividing by 3 over 2 is multiplying by 2 over 3. So 2 times 2 over 3 is 4 over 3. Right? And there we go. Um, okay, now, uh, bef okay, so remember the original problem had x's in it, so when we write our final answer up here, uh, it should be in terms of x, not in terms of u. And so we should replace u with what was u originally, u was x plus 2, and just so we remember, right, u was x plus 2, that's how we got x equals u minus 2, right? So we're just going to plug that in everywhere we see a u, here and here. Um, yeah, okay, let's do that now. I was going to do that later, but we might as well, might as well do that now. Um, all right, so this is going to equal, need a lot of space here, 2 over 5, right, times, in parentheses, x plus 2 to the 5 halves, I'll write it this way again, 5 over 2, right? Minus 4 over 3 times, in parentheses, x plus 2 to the 3 halves. Oops, 3 halves plus c. Okay, well, there you go. Now it's written entirely in terms of, of x, and we can say that's our final answer. Unfortunately, when you look this up in the book, it's not going to have this answer. Um, well, it might. It, it might have both forms. Um, so here's the issue, right? We have a factor of x plus 2 over here. We have another factor of x plus 2 over here. We can factor it out. In fact, we can factor out the lowest exponent. We can factor out x plus 2 to the 3 halves. So let's do that, right? Let's factor out x plus 2 to the power 3 over 2, right? And what's left inside here is 2 over 5 times x plus 2 to the 
2 over 2, right? Because 3 over 2 plus 2 over 2 is 5 over 2, but 2 over 2 is just 1. In fact, we don't even need the 1, right? And then minus 4 over 3 times, well, x plus 2 to the 3 halves, we factored that out, so that's just a 1. Right? Okay, so yeah, I mean, did we have to do this? No, but in some cases it, it, it kind of makes sense to do that. And while we're at it, um, we can factor out uh, the denominator here is 5 times 3 is 15. So we can also factor out a 1 over 15. I mean, I know it, it might seem silly to do that, but, right, so this will be 6 over 15 times x plus 2 minus, uh, let's see, 3 times 5 is 15, right? So 4 times 5 is 20 over 15 times 1. And now if we factor out the 1 over 15, actually, I think we can factor out 2 over 15. So this will be a 2 over 15 times x plus 2 to the 3 halves. And then inside will be, um, well, 3 times x plus 2, right? So 2 times 3 is 6, 6 over 15, right? Minus uh, 10 plus c. And we can go further. We can expand all this out here. So everything outside, I think that's as good as it gets. 2 fifteenths plus x plus 2 to the 3 halves. And then we have 3x plus 6, right? But 6 minus 10 is just negative 4. So we can do that in our heads, right? So, so there we go, right? So, long problem, there is a long problem. Uh, the original problem was the integral of x times the square root of x plus 2, dx. And uh, we had to use substitution, right? So we made the substitution. We had to change all the x's into u's here, right? And then once you do that, we expanded this out, multiplied it out, split it up as the, the difference of the two integrals, use the power rule. And then once you use the power rule, you get this. And notice at this stage right here, um, I was tempted to factor out the u to the 3 halves, but uh, I decided to go back to x first and then factor out the x plus 2 to the 3 halves. So really, going from here to here, oops, I didn't mean to cross out the c here. Um, yeah, so going from here to here has nothing to do with calculus. This is all just algebra, right? This is just simplifying, right? So, yeah, because as I mentioned, the book might not write it this way. The book might have the answer like this. So if you get this answer up here, and the book has this answer down here, you might say, oh, then I must have done something wrong. No, nope, you didn't do anything wrong. You got the right answer. It's just not considered simplified. So, so yeah, it's a little bit of algebra here in the middle to multiply it out to get the, the answer the book likes. Um, but on a test, look, I'm not going to be that picky about it. If you leave it like it is over here, right, I'm fine with that. I'm perfectly fine with this as an answer. But, you know, it can be simplified further by factoring out the common, uh, well, Factoring out the two-fifths, x plus two to the three-halves. We could have done it all at once, but I thought one at a time is good enough. So anyways, there's, there's the final answer. So let me, um, um, let me, let me rewrite this. Uh, first of all, let me make sure this is correct. Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, Okay, so I'll just write the final answer up here, right? This was originally 2 fifteenths right, times x plus 2 to the 3 halves, and then times, I think it was 3x minus 4, right? And don't forget your plus c. Okay. So again, you can check by multiplying this out and seeing if you get this, or in this case, this. All right. Um, 
Yeah, it's mass four. Yep. Uh, one thing before we move on here is uh, you might say, well, at this stage here, I had to multiply, right, the one uh, u to the one half and distribute that to the u minus two. And you might say, well, why didn't we do that up here in the original problem? Because yeah, here you can't distribute the x inside the square root, right? I mean, you could, but it would be, it, you would make it worse, right? It would actually be the integral of the square root of uh, x squared times x, which would be x cubed, plus 2x squared. And that doesn't make it any easier. That actually makes it harder. So, so yeah, you don't, you don't want to distribute a single factor here in, uh, under the square root. On the other hand, here we got the square root on the outside, and then we can distribute that inside the parentheses here, right on the, sorry, <laughs> over here on the right. So, so yeah, we had to do the substitution, right? It, it wouldn't work the other way. You can't put the x inside the square root. Doesn't work. Um, so yeah, again, a tricky one and a very long one. And in fact, almost half the problem was just doing algebra to simplify. But um, yeah, so so yeah, th this this was not an easy one. But uh, um, yeah, so I think uh, you know what I I'll, we'll do more examples in the next video. We should stop here.